Welcome back, my warrior family. I'm so thankful to be here with you again this week. We got a lot to uh, go over tonight, and we're just going to kind of dive right into things. Uh, first, I, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful mothers out there who have sacrificed so much for your families. Um, I want to say a special happy Mother's Day to my mother, Irene Loftus. I don't know if you'll ever find a more gentle and humble person on the face of the planet. Mom, I love you and I thank you so much for all that you've done and how you have been there for me uh, when it was just me and you. And I also want to say Happy Mother's Day to my wife, Patty. She has been an outstanding mother to our children and I don't, I just can't imagine where our children would be without the love of that wonderful mother. And there's no way I can ever repay the love that she has shown to our kids. It's, uh, you know, if your mother's gone on to be with the Lord, not here with you anymore, uh, I know this weekend can be hard, but just uh, for those that 
have a mother waiting for him in heaven. Praise God, you've got a treasure there. And for those that still have your mother, take time to let her know how much you do love her. I, my mom sent out a meme one time. She got me really good with this one. She's like, you know, the meme, basically what it said is, you give me a hard time because I, I don't understand computers. Just don't forget I taught you how to use a spoon. You know, and that's really stuck with me. Um, you know, when we were little, they, they just loved us, and they took care of us when we couldn't take care of ourselves. So a very, very happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful mothers out there. Another thing I want to talk about just real quick before we get into the message is Grace Center Church and Brother Collins Olo uh, are part of this ministry. It is our missions ministry. And they are in the process, you guys have heard me talk about this several times, of building a new church. And they're trying to move forward with this, but funds uh, have stopped. And I am going to ask you to pray and uh, sincerely look into your heart. And if God leads that you would please donate to a wonderful cause. They're, they're working so hard to spread the gospel there in Coselli. They recently had a, an outreach uh, mission to the market there in Coselli. And uh, it was, what a testimony. What a testimony they have. The things that took place, uh, people set free from demonic possession, people saved, people that were practicing witchcraft, uh, giving their lives to God. Just amazing work that they're doing there. And their church, not only is it almost impossible to gather in in the summer, now they have so many people coming that there's not enough room. And that's a great problem to have at a church, but in order to expand, it takes money to build. So I'm asking you to please pray and reach down in your heart. And if you feel led to give to Brother Collins and his ministry so that we can help them further the gospel, just go to brokenwarriorministries.com. There's a donate button at the top. Uh, when you send in your gift, let us know that you want to uh, that to go toward Brother Collins. And we will make sure that he gets it. If you don't want to do that route, I can get you the information straight to Brother Collins so that you know that it goes there. Uh, myself and several other pastors um, can testify to Brother Collins and his ministry and how powerful it is and how he has been doing a great job over there for a very long time. So continue, to, uh, most of all, continue to pray for them. Uh, they have, uh, like I said, they have things that they deal with that we don't see a whole lot. Uh, Satan works in the open over there and it's, um, it's a different world. And Lord willing, uh, I hope to go on my first missions trip to visit with Brother Collins and be there with them and preach the Word of God. Uh, so please pray that um, if you feel led to, please donate for that cause. And also, before we get started, down in the bottom uh, left-hand corner, there's a share button. Please share this message with folks. This is a very powerful message. It's a very old message. Uh, but it's a powerful message and one I really feel like we need in today's society. Um, I don't watch the news a lot, but there's been some things going on in our world that has got people in a huge uproar. And I want to speak to that today. Before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you so much that you loved us so much that you gave. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. I ask tonight, Father, that you just would look upon your humble servant, and Father, just everything that comes out of my mouth, may it be inspired of the Holy Spirit. May the power of God reach people as they sit and listen to these words, Father, because it's not me, it's you. I pray that your power would touch their lives, touch their hearts, that they would feel the love of God. And if they don't know you, if they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I pray that the Holy Spirit would begin to stir within them now and they would understand that it's because you love them that you are making that effort right now to have them come to you. Father, we thank you and we praise you. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, the message tonight is titled, Fall in Love Again. I want to ask a question. Uh, I, I tried to figure out a way that I could 
really explain love and there's not a the best way that I know to explain it to you is if you stop and if you have children if you think about the love that you felt when you looked into your child's eye for the first time that that overwhelming love that there's nothing that you wouldn't do when you look at Mother's Day mothers when you looked at your children how much love did you have for them and not just then but over the years and I, I thought about my love for my wife I think about the first time that I saw Patty I was so speechless and awestruck by what what I felt inside of me I'd never seen or heard of this woman before but something in my heart and in my soul stirred that told me I have just walked up to the person that God made for me he truly made for me and the love that developed through that relationship I was willing to do anything to be able to to see her to be with her we lived in two separate states at the time I had been visiting with my sister for a little while in Oklahoma been going through a pretty rough time and I was there and my sister introduced me to uh, a lady that she was attending college with for physical therapy assistant and I was so awestruck by her and so speechless which um, if you talk to my wife you'll you'll know that that's something that doesn't happen very often with me is to be speechless I was I was speechless all I could do is walk up to her and say hey I'm Tony Loftus um, I like your truck that's all, that's all I could say you'll have to excuse me being inside the, the our building here we have some new tenants it appears uh, and they're making quite a racket but hey it's God's creation <laughs> I'm not gonna stop because of it so it's it's that love that I saw in in her it's that love that we had for each other it's that love that no matter what it took we had to we just wanted to be together and I'm telling you right now we're coming up on celebrating 14 years of being married and I am more in love with her today than I have ever been but you know that's not always the case that's not always the case with a lot of married couples. There's so many couples that when they're first married, the, there's just this, that like I was speaking of, there's, I guess if you want to call it puppy love, there's that, that phase of, that you go through of just, you're all about just being around each other. But sometimes life can get in the way of all that and we can find ourselves in a season where that has faded because our relationship has been put on the back burner because of it can be multiple things but we are not at a place where our love is like it was and that's what I want to talk about tonight I use that as an example to, to illustrate that that love is powerful it's always powerful at the beginning but sometimes sometimes that love can diminish because of stress of the world I want us tonight to examine that and I want us to think about what we need to do to return to that love now the scripture I want to start with is out of the book of Revelations we're gonna use John tonight John has been exiled to Patmos and there uh, God comes to him in the first couple of chapters and is explaining I want you to write a message to these seven different churches the one I want to focus on tonight is in Revelations chapter 2 to the message to the church of Ephesus so if you'll turn with me to Revelations chapter 2 starting with uh, verse 1 Write this letter to the angel of the church of Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. 
I know all the things you do. I've seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know that you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they're apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand and its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches, to everyone who is victorious. I will give fruit from the tree of life and the paradise of God. If you look at those letters, uh, basically everything that's in those letters you can find in the modern day church and it applies just as much today as it did back then. And there's a lot of... There's a lot of messages in these letters, but tonight, for the sake of time, I am going to focus primarily on verses 4, 5, verses 4 and 5. Now, notice how God, he, he, always, he always came first with, this is what you're doing right. There's a lot of things in our church that we're doing right. There is. There's a lot of good people that are doing right. But he also followed up with, this is where you've fallen short. And I felt really led to preach this topic tonight, to preach to you, to bring you the Word of God. One thing that I want to emphasize to all of you, if you are going to stand on what you believe you need to stand on that belief system based on the Word of God. How are you going to be able to express to others why you believe what you believe if you are not studying the Scriptures and you don't know them for yourself? This is an important thing for all Christians to understand. There is no more powerful weapon than we have than the Word of God. Now let's talk about three different people, types of people that the word addresses, and we'll look into that, but I want to look at these three different types of people. God's children. For those that are God's children, you've accepted the sacrifice that Jesus made for all, the forgiveness of sin, a spirit of love, a desire to have a closer walk with God, and you desire to live your life with joy and make every day reflect that gift. As a child of God, that is what we should experience and do. For those of you that are mature in the faith, how is your love displayed? How is your love for your fellow man? How is your love for God displayed to the world? Are you willing to stand up for God even when it's not easy? And that's something that I have, that's something that's really been on my mind this week. There's been a lot of things happening in our world that have people in a huge uproar. And it's what led me to this message. You know, even if we're not willing to stand up and proclaim God, His creation is. When you look out at the world, what he created is always going to give glory to God. It will bring glory to him. But as mature Christians, it is our duty to stand up for what we believe in and to help people understand the love and the joy and the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, the love that we know that God has toward us. How are we displaying that to the world? 
we're supposed to love people that don't necessarily deserve it. It's our responsibility to love with all of our hearts and lead others by example. Jesus Christ was a perfect example. And that's the example that we're supposed to follow. Are we going to be perfect in every way our entire life? I think it's possible because Jesus did it. Now you'll say, well, he was a deity. No, he, but he was a man. He was a man that walked with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we have to strive for. That's what we have to look toward. Jesus' example for how to live. Now when we love people that do not practice the ideals who have um, different lifestyles, who support or uh, are in favor of certain things, uh, there, there's people that will step on, step, lie, and steal to get promotions. There's people that uh, will do anything to make sure that prayer and God stay out of schools. I just There's a lot of things in this world that people view as okay, but as Christians, we do not. Now, when you choose to love those people, does that mean you're condoning what they do? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it is not our job to judge it is not our job to condemn folks. Love is how we win folks over. Love is what Jesus showed the world. Love is what caused Jesus Christ on the cross as he was dying to say, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's love. He died for us. That's love. Jesus himself said, I don't come into the world that people would be condemned, but I come into the world that through me, through me they might be saved. Are we living that life? For those of you that are new Christians, you may still be trying to understand what exactly does this transformation that I feel in me mean the great thing is that you've made a decision that will alter the course not only of your life but your eternal soul get into god's word experience the awesome power of prayer and come to know the might of the holy spirit god in you so we've talked about God's people, God's children, those that are mature in the faith, and those that are new in the faith. About the love that we are supposed to show toward people. Well, let's look at another example of John's writing. Let's look at how he explains love among God's people. If you'll turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, we're going to go through uh, verses 7 through 17. And guys, like I said, tonight, I'm using a lot of scripture, and I pray that you will write this down. As a matter of fact, I pray that you would just read 1 John. It's not a very long book, but it uh, it's one of those kind of like Ephesians. It packs a punch. The book of James packs a punch. So 1 John. Chapter 2, 7 through 17. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have heard from the very beginning. This old commandment, to love one another, is the same message you heard before. So John's trying to explain here, look, I'm not bringing anything new. I know there's been a lot of times that we've, we've given messages, and the messages that I feel like God wants me to deliver that I've heard from the very beginning, back to the basics, keep it simple. Here, 
my friends, I'm not, I'm not writing anything to you new. I'm not giving you a new commandment. You've heard this from the very beginning. This is the basics. Love one another. It's the same message you heard before. But he's trying to let them understand in verse 2 that there's difference. There is a difference now because Jesus is coming to the world. In, in verse 8. In verse 8, yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment and you also are living it. For the darkness is disappearing. Did you hear me? The darkness is disappearing. A couple weeks ago we spoke about speaking light into the darkness. Guys, there's a lot of darkness in this world today. Are you going to be the one that stands up to be the light? And with by the light, I mean with love. For the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims I'm living in the light but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. Guys, if you've been in church for any length of time, I am certain that you have been involved in arguments. If you have been involved in the church where you are either Sunday school teachers or you help with the church and you're involved in the church, at some point there's going to come places where people disagree. But that doesn't mean that anger and hate have to come into the issue and divide churches. That happens so much. I'm just going to tell you right now, I was a part of that. I was a part of that once. And it hurt. It hurt me for a very long time. But when I finally came to realize that I'm the only one that's hurting, Let's just forgive and let's accept the fact that none of us are perfect and go on. Live love. No matter what, no matter if you agree or disagree, live love. Be able to talk to one another in love. Verse 12. I'm writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I'm writing to you who, who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I'm writing to you who are young in the faith because you have won your battle with the evil one. There are the three groups of people that I was talking about. And this is John writing specifically to those three groups of people. God's children, mature in faith, and the new in faith, young in faith. Verse 14, I have written to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the very beginning. I have written to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's words live in your hearts and you have, not, and you have won your battle with the evil one. For those of you that are young in the faith, praise God, you've won your battle against the evil one. You have accepted Jesus Christ into your life, and he lives in you. For God's children, you understand who Jesus is, you, that he's been there from the very beginning. You've accepted what he's done, and you're joyous because of it. For those who are mature in the faith. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to all God's children. We have a responsibility to the young Christians. And when I say young, I'm not talking about in age. I'm talking about new Christians. And we have a responsibility to the lost of this world. 
I guess put it like this. If you knew somebody was blind and you were standing on the other side of a hill from them, would you just holler and say, come on over here? No. They have no idea where they're at. They can't see what's going on. You'd go, you'd go get them. You would help them. You'd help them across those tricky terrains to get to the other side. Why is it when we look at lost people that sometimes when we don't see eye to eye or they have a different belief system than what we do, we want to use anger and hate in the world? Guys, it happens among Christians. It's happening today. What does the Bible, what does John say here about loving the world? Now he talks about how new Christians, mature Christians, God's people are to love each other and what they understand about being saved. Verse 15, he's going to talk about how we're not to love the world. Verse 15, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. That's pretty plain. One thing that I would emphasize to each and every one of you, always ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom when it comes to God's word. Let him be who teaches you, not, not anybody else, the Holy Spirit. That's why we ask the Holy Spirit Whatever I say, I want it to be from Him, and I want when it comes to your ears to be felt by the Holy Spirit. This world has a lot to offer, but not, a, not to God's ch children. It does not. This world will try to entice you. This world will try to pull you in. Just as when... Jesus had gone up into the mountains for 40 days to fast. The devil tried to go up on a mountaintop with him and show him all the land and say, if you'll bow to me, I'll give you all that. Jesus depended on his heavenly father for everything. He would not give in to those temptations of the world. And neither should we. Stand firm in what you believe. Rely on God for all that you know. Don't lean into your own understanding. Verse 16, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving, every, a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever this this world is temporary I I'd be amiss if I did not say that that's been brought very close to me and while I don't worry whatsoever about it I, I can say that with all the truth in me it does make one stop and think about our mortality and how we never know. We never know when we may leave this walk of life. When you hear the word tumor, for those that don't know, I have a brain tumor. It's not cancerous, but it's a pretty large one and it's right at the base of my brain and it's going into my spine and they're going to have to remove it. When you hear stuff like that, you know, you start to think about the mortality of this body. But the awesome thing is, is I already know I'm just passing through. I am a temporary resident here and I have one shot at life. And what am I going to do with that life? The best thing you can do with this life is love God and love people and help lead people to the truth, to Jesus Christ. Love one another. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to go uh, verses 11 through 24. Love one another. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. 
Again, it's not a new message. It's one we've heard from the beginning. John reiterates that point in chapter 3. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. Now I want you to listen to this. Verse 13. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. One thing I have realized is it doesn't matter how much love you try to show some people when you're trying to discuss certain topics or your beliefs and why you feel that this topic is wrong, this lifestyle is wrong, the way you got into that position is wrong, the way you handle this is wrong. When, whenever you start to point out, based on scripture, why you do not agree, because in, at the end of the day, we show love, but that doesn't mean we are condoning sin. You need to be able to stand with the word of God and explain why you believe what you believe and that there is a solid foundation for why I will not agree that that is something that God would look upon and smile. That is something that God would look upon and be okay with. There are a lot of things in this life that people are taking part in that God sees as nothing but sin. There are too many to name. But we live in a time where people, if you're a Christian, we live in a time where if you do stand up and you do proclaim your beliefs, you're hated immediately. But we've been told from the very beginning that we would be. And that's okay. Just make sure that when you stand on your beliefs, you do it out of love. If we love our brothers and sisters in verse 14 who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life, but a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. Verse 16, we know that real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. That's how we know what true love is. So we also ought to give up our, our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now some of you may think that's pretty radical, but greater love hath no man than he would lay down his life for his friend. There's people that are doing it right now, this very minute, for you and I, for our freedoms in the United States. They're giving up their lives because they believe. They believe in their country. They believe in that love for their country and they believe in protecting it so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we do. Jesus believed in love and he gave his life for it. If he gave his life for it, so should we. And I'm not necessarily speaking of giving up your life to pass to death. I'm also thinking about how it, it is the least we could do to give our lives, our purpose to him that gave so much. Verse 18, dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Man, I'm telling you what, that one really, I know some of this may be toe stomping for some, but um, I, 
I always enjoyed a toe stomping message because it helped me grow. Don't just say, I love you. And you never do anything to show it. When you truly love someone, you they'll know. It'll be very plain by your actions. You've heard the old saying, actions speak louder than words. It still holds true. Verse 19, our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident that we, when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Verse 24, those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. Again, this is scripture that helps us understand how we are supposed, God is telling us that we are supposed to love one another. Hate is not in the equation it's not our job to condemn folks or judge folks. The last scripture I want to look at is it talks about God's love in us. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Again, I know I'm using a lot of scripture. If you'll just take these down, you can go back and read. But I, I just firmly feel that whenever you are going to examine your life and how you should be it should be from god's word god's word is telling us and it tells it in so many other places that love is the way to lead people love is the way to live love is what god expects us to do love first john 4 7 through 21 beloved let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. So what he's trying to say, if you do not have love, he that loveth not knoweth not God. If you don't love people, if you don't have love in your heart for yourself and your fellow man, you don't know God. For God is love. In this, was, in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. This is, how, this is the proof. This is the proof of how much God loves us. He was willing to send his only Son to die on a cross for you, for me. That's the action that proved God's love. Verse 10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Again, it's just, it goes on to explain, this is how we know God loves us. He loved us so much that he gave us his son and the ultimate sacrifice that was the atonement for sin for all who would come to him and accept the price that had been paid. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. Verse 14, and if we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. I'm going to read that again. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth 
in him and he in God. That is such a profound and simple statement. Confess Jesus Christ and God will live in you. 16, and we have known and believed that love, we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that me, we may have boldness in that day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. We were not given a spirit of fear, we were given a spirit of love. And in that perfect love, it casts out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Well, there's a lot of people that need to get their head wrapped around that when it comes to the spirit of fear. People are running rampant, afraid of everything. Are we doubting God's love that he'll take care of us? What are we afraid of? It's not God. It shouldn't be God unless you don't know him. What are we fearful of? If we are fearful, then we need to find that love that drives it out. And that's from God. Verse 19. I love this. We love him because he first loved us. Love moved first. I love that song. Love moved first. We couldn't we could not bridge that gap. Love did it for us. Because God loved us so much, he made a way. Verse 20 If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Wow. If you can't love the people that are right in front of your face, how can you say you love God that you've never even seen? I mean, it doesn't get any plainer than that. And again, this is God's word that you're using and that I'm challenging you with tonight to understand how important it is to love one another and to love God. 21, and this commandment have we from him. But he who loveth God, love also his brother. Guys, the main point of the message, today's world is so full of hate. So many people are using anger and hatred to stand up for what they believe in. It's not how God calls us to stand. That's not how Jesus stood. That's not the example that we were given. There's a huge difference between righteous anger and hate. Huge difference. We were given a spirit of anger, but it was in defense of God. And in defense of just as Jesus, when he went into the temple and they had, he yelled at him, you've turned a place of worship into a den of thieves and flipped the tables over. That was righteous anger because it was a disgrace to God. It's not our place to judge or condemn. The Bible says, for whatever measure you use to judge others, the same will be used to judge you. This whole message is for everybody that hears me to examine your life and look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you leading with love? Are you showing people who God is by love because you're not showing who God is with hate 
like I said, it doesn't matter if you agree with folks and the way they're living their life or what they're doing. When it's all over, they'll stand in judgment just like you and I will. I'm fairly confident in saying this, that we have enough stuff that we need to deal with in our own lives and keeping ourselves straight to be meddling in other folks' business and hating people. We have enough of our own problems. Please understand how important love is. We are to love. It's the only it's only when we decide to love people regardless of their beliefs and lifestyles that Jesus wins out. It does not mean that we condone their choices. Again, we've talked about that. It means that because of the Holy Spirit, God in us and how he moves in us and the example that Jesus taught, we show them love regardless and we do it with example. Guys, so if tonight if you're listening and you realize that you have let yourself fall into the trap of getting wrapped up in the anger that is so prevalent in so many different topics in the world right now, I ask you to just just get on your knees. I ask you to just beseech God and ask him to put that love back in your heart fall in love again that relationship that gave you so much courage and zeal to go out and just tell the world about this wonderful experience and this wonderful God that you serve has time passed and you've become jaded to so many things that maybe that love is not once what it was I'm asking you to search your hearts Let's find that love again. Maybe you're out there and you've never accepted Jesus Christ and you don't even understand the love that I'm talking about tonight is for you especially. I want to introduce you to love that goes beyond comprehension. I want to introduce you to somebody that can change your life and save your soul, Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ, that you through faith will bow your head and accept him. That you will ask him into your life to save you, to forgive you of your sins, so that you too can feel that love that I speak of. I challenge all of you tonight, live your life with love. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. We're called to love. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for loving us first. We thank you that you are standing right there. You're always there. For those that are out there tonight that don't have that relationship, you're standing right there. I pray that you will just reach out your hand to your Heavenly Father, ask for forgiveness, believe on the name Jesus and what he did for you, and you can be saved and know that love. For I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight, Father, no matter how long they've been a Christian, I pray that they would all look in the mirror and ask themselves, am I leading with love? Father, I pray that you would just pour out your love upon them. Let them feel a fresh anointing. Let them feel how much you love them so that we can demonstrate that love to others. Father, we thank you and we praise you for it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. If you made a decision for Christ, I pray you'll let us know. If you have any needs, I pray that you will let us know. Lead with love. God willing, we'll see you next week.